Shepard, Pidge, right now. Yes, sir.
get stuck with all the bad luck. No one <laughs> but Donald Duck.
Titans. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. 
Oh, yeah, blah. Who's your friend? Me. <laughs>
Bellum Donut. Hello, Donuts. <laughs> oh, Donuts. But this stuff's out of fun. Aisha's old lady. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
get stuck with all the bad luck. No one <laughs> but Donald Duck.
Daisy Duck, please tell me what happened in your own words. Well, Doctor, I came to tell you about my boyfriend, Donald Duck. Now, now, madam, no names. All right, Doctor. Well, one beautiful spring day, Donald, uh, I mean, my boyfriend and I were walking in the park. Now in the window on the 99th floor of a tall building was a beautiful flower in a pot. It toppled out of the window and fell like a meteor. Right on my boyfriend's head. I tried to revive him. Finally, he came to and looked at me. I smiled back reassuringly, and then it happened. It seemed as though we were hearing some strange voice. Donald Duck. You are the greatest singer in the world. With that, he got up, dusted himself off, gave me a low, gracious bow, and started to sing. When you wished upon a star Shining brightly from afar It was beautiful. I stood enchanted. Tears filled my eyes. Will come to you. As he finished, I applauded. I was so proud of him. But when I rushed forward to clasp his hand, he gave me a cold, icy stare, as though he didn't know me. And before I could say how out of place, he was snatched up by a famous theatrical agent. The flower from his head fell at my feet. A symbol of my lost love. I took it home. I put it in a vase on the mantel. It was all I had to remember him by. Because I never saw him again after that day. Except in advertising. On labels. In society columns. And on flashing marquees. If your heart is in your dream. No request is too extreme when you wish upon a star. His golden voice on the radio only made it harder to bear. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. I didn't want to live. I was going crazy, man. by a newsboy's voice. Donald Duck sings in person tonight at Radio City. I rushed for my rap. This would be his first public appearance, my first chance to see him. But by the time I reached Radio City, a long line of humanity had formed. And I was too late to get inside. So I went to the rear and waited 
seated at the stage door. At last I should see him. But no crowds formed to block my view. Thousands clamored to get his autograph. Hoping to get a glimpse of him, I waited through the summer and through the winter. I walked out front, where at least I could see his picture. Donald, speak to me. By the time summer came again, I was determined to see him. To get by the doorman, I first tried pleading, disguise, force. All with the same result. But as I was coming home that night, I met him face to face. Donald, darling, I've missed you terribly. I'm so happy for you. But he gave me that same cold, icy stare again. I fell at his feet and poured out my soul to him. Oh, tears. I told him I was hungry and starving for his love. So he threw me a dime and continued on his way. But as soon as I gained control of myself, I decided it was time to come to see you, Doctor for a solution to my problem. Well, it's obvious the hit on the head caused your boyfriend to go through a complete mental and physical change. I can help you. But first, you have a big decision to make. Do you want the world to have him and his beautiful golden voice? Or do you want him back again for yourself? It's either the world or you. Me! 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 <laughs> me! Please calm yourself, Miss Duck. Here is my professional advice. I suggest you take that same flower, put it in a heavy pot, and then it will tell. And if he should. Then now you understand. Thank you, Doctor. I'll do it tonight. Stars are kind. They bring to those who love the sweet. Secret love like a boat. heard of a boodle beetle? Well, confidentially, neither have we. But it seems that long ago, these little creatures were plentiful. But because of an inborn love for travel and adventure, the boodle beetle is now a rare little bug. The bug collector, or <clears throat> the entomologist, regards this little bug as a prize for his collection. Going somewhere, Sonny? I wouldn't be in too much of a hurry if I were you. There's danger lurking out in them woods, and you're just setting yourself for a heap of trouble. You know, there's not many of us boodles left, and it's just because too many of them have set out across that stream and never come back. And here you go, a setting your cap for the same medicine. Sit down, Sonny, and let me tell you a story. When I was a young pup and full of vinegar, <laughs> just like yourself, I had ideas of adventure, too. So I packed my bag and said goodbye to my home. <laughs> I'm a little funny about this sentimental stuff. And set out for what was going to be the doggondest adventure. I'll have to admit, it was pretty fascinating at first. Anything like this happen? Uh oh. 
Watch this. Big, tall things that disappear in the sky. Phew, a bug sure has to be careful when he's out looking for adventure. But unknown to me at the time, there was lurking in the forest a horrible monster. What's that now? Yeah, what? Well, it's not about what? Huh? Oh, so well. I give up. Well, I guess I must have walked hundreds of miles that first day. I was just picking them up and laying them down. I just didn't feel up to it. So I thought I'd lay down for a little shut-eye and tackle it in the morning. Well, suddenly, I had the feeling I wasn't alone. And there, on top of the mountain, I saw a most amazing thing. Well, being a curious little fellow, I decided to investigate. And there it was. A horrible monster, millions of feet high. I sneaked out to get a better look, and suddenly, it moved. Huh? I looked again. Two hideous eyes glared at me. A bigger, bigger. It's him! Hurrah! I can't him! I can't him! <laughs> Come on, small fry. Get stuck much at a time. <laughs> oh, no, you don't swing on this one. You come and get away from us again, you don't. I'll get you hit in the butt. So, there I was, headed for I don't know what. It was simply terrifying. I tried again and again to escape, but it was no use. If only I had listened to Mama. Just think of it. The famous Professor Duck. Oh, boy. I had just one more duck. Now what? <laughs> the door opened, and there he was. Suddenly, I realized that this was my last chance. It was now or never. It's gone. little bug. And do you think I cared what folks thought about the sentimental stuff? <laughs> no, siree. So you see, Sonny, home isn't such a bad place after all. <laughs> uh, I was just thinking. For all I know, that monster may be looking for me yet. Oh, look how big, oh, what's your last thing I do?